So here at the New York Auto Show with Patrick McKenna from Mini. So uh, big news uh, from uh, Mini. I mean, it's kind of contradictory to say, right? Big news from Mini. <laughs> big, yeah, big news from Mini is right. So we have a new Countryman. So it's hard to believe that the Countryman is already three and a half years old. We've sold 62,000 of these cars so far. So we're the number one market in the world. Uh, and that's great for us because back in 2002 when we came, a lot of Americans said, oh, that small car will never, never succeed. So here we are three and a half years later. So we've updated the, the car. So we put in a new grill, um, some new designs. Um, we now have uh, black headlight rings. We have some new colors, jungle green, starlight blue, midnight gray. And we put on skid plates on the front and in the rocker panels to just give it a little bit more of a rugged look, yeah. a little more masculine look to it. No, it's as extreme as the rally car that is here too. Yeah, not as extreme as the da Dakar uh, Countryman yeah. that's that's here. So we have that on a big display yeah. um, on a nice mound of sand. And yeah. uh, we're thrilled that, that Mini won the da Dakar Rally, not only this year, but three know, years in a row. In a row so, uh, Paris Dakar, that is now running yeah. South America, actually. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned three years and a half. Uh, it used to be that the life cycle of a car was like almost seven years. That's going on now because other manufacturers are also doing the same, like updating cars three, three and a half years into, in, into, into their life cycle. Is it competition? Is it new technology? Is, uh, what's, what's driving that? Well, I think for many, and this is very similar to BMW, we are quite long in our life cycle. We're about seven years. And this is really just a freshening. So there's no sheet metal changes. It's really changing, you know, some of the color schemes. Yeah. Um, you know, we changed the dials on the inside. So we have black dials with some chrome bezels. So it's really just an update to keep the car looking uh, fresh. Um, but the life cycle for us um, is interesting because our, our design is so iconic, especially on the, yeah. on the hard top, um, that we don't, uh, our sales don't go up dramatically and then go down dramatically because it's this radical new design. Our sales tend to stay slow and steady and, and increasing because we have such a consistency in our design exactly. and, and over that long life cycle. So probably it's more driven by new technologies, more, more consumer expectations. People are like, oh my, I don't want to compare it to a, an iPhone or like a smartphone, but like people are like kind of in that mindset now with their things, yeah. gadgets and cars. Obviously a car is a more expensive thing, but and as newer things come out to the market, people are like, oh, I want that. Yeah, and, and the way we are, so we're definitely always updating our technology. So with Mini Connected, we're adding apps constantly. Yeah. And that's, that's the nice thing about it is that it really, anytime you update the phone with new apps, we're able to do that in the car. Um, but the design is really more of a slow evolution. Um, you look at the new Mini, and it definitely looks like that familiar friend. Mm -hmm. And when you look back 2002 until the present, it really has only changed. Uh, this is now the third time. Yeah. So we have a lot of longevity in the, in the look of the But speaking of, of the new, of the new Mini, um, that's a, a big change. I mean, in many, yeah. many ways, especially the, the powertrain mm -hmm. with that, that amazing three-cylinder engine that yeah. I was like so surprised. And I, yeah. I enjoyed it a lot when I drove it. Yeah, so we're, uh, with this new hardtop, we're looking at all new engines, a three-cylinder turbo for the first time in the Cooper, and then the four-cylinder in the Cooper S, and they're fantastic new BMW Group engines, and the the interior of the car I'm thrilled with. It's just we've, we've raised the bar and the level of materials. Mm -hmm. We've really held the price flat, so it's only a 1% increase. It's uh, under $20,000. It's 19950 but even that base car, even that $20,000 car, has excellent seating materials, leather-wrapped uh, multifunction steering wheel. We have great LED lighting on the interior, so people get a real experience of driving the Mini. Um, and we have a massive amount of technology that's been in more expensive cars. It really hasn't been in this compact car segment. Uh, things like head-up display, a parking assistant, yeah. Um, uh, things that we're going to be introducing in the near future like uh, video, active cruise control, um, collision avoidance technologies. 
So the amount of technology coming into the car is really outstanding. And you said only the price has increased uh, like about 1%? Yeah. That's pretty amazing for yeah. all those kind of yeah. things, huh? Yeah, so that's, uh, you know, that's part of what we do in our role as product planners for the U.S. We really, our job is to look at the marketplace. And I think Americans really benefit from a very competitive marketplace. Um, so we want to price the car aggressively. We want people to drive this car and yeah. own this car. Um, for model year 15, we'll be adding in climate control, uh, auto climate control, um, which is really nice in the new car with a digital readout, and then also rain sensor. So that you take out all the guesswork. The wipers just go automatically when it starts raining. So we'll add those. We'll do a price increase uh, for that. But we're adding value. So even when we do raise a price, we're adding value at the same time. So is the U.S. market the most demanding in terms of both consumer expectations and government regulations? I mean, it's pretty hard. You have a hard job to do. Well, uh, thank you for saying that. <laughs> I think uh, that's what I, I think of it sometimes. But it's a fun job. It's a it's a most fun you're, job you're I've like ever predicting had. predicting the, the, yeah. what, what's going on. Um, we're very fortunate in that we have even our base car, like a Cooper, um, is a much higher level of equipment even than cars in, let's say, Europe or Asia. In those markets, we have smaller engines and more yeah. entry-level cars. Um, so even our, our base car has a high level of uh, specification, as we like to say. Um, we conform with all the, all the regulations. So we have eight airbags, so we have two extra airbags compared to other world markets where you ac actually have knee airbags in there. Um, you know, we have great crash test uh, safety ratings that we're still waiting on but um, you know we add a lot of a lot of things yeah. into the cars for the, uh, for the let's US talk market. a little bit more about the three cylinder engine because uh, we, we talked about this when we did the launch in Puerto Rico a few months ago and uh, again I think in the US especially you mentioned in other countries it's more common but here in the US when you people hear about a three cylinder engine car and say like what I'm, I'm not yeah. getting a motorcycle yeah <laughs> But I was surprised by that. I yeah. actually enjoyed more driving the three-cylinder than the regular four-cylinder car. Right. Because I think it's more agile. And, and, and But people maybe, I mean, yeah, I they think still it's, have their doubts maybe, huh? Yeah, I don't think Americans have any concept of what a, what a three-cylinder. No. There's only one other car really out on the market. There were some uh, one several years ago that weren't very good. Um, so this is definitely a new experience. The interesting thing for us, even though we're going to a three-cylinder, smaller engine, 1.5 liter turbocharge, it's our zero to 60 time is 2.3 seconds faster because it's now turbocharged. Yeah. Um, our torque is increased 42%, so it's 162 pound-feet of torque. So just it gives you that pulling power, fun to drive. And then uh, our miles per gallon is 42 miles per gallon highway. But I think what none of that communicates, so those are all impressive statistics, but what people don't realize is just exactly as you mentioned, agility. Yeah. And not only agility, but the way it sounds, it's got a throaty sound to it that actually sounds great. And I think that's, that's going to surprise people. Um, and a lot of the journalists had a reaction that you did, which is... Um, they're amazed at what that the three cylinder three is better engine. than the four. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Well, <laughs> I know. I, have, I mean, but in I terms of sell. what it is, I mean, I like, completely honest. Like uh, when 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 I was surprised to yeah. be gladly surprised about it. And some of the journalists said, um, "If you didn't tell me exactly, yeah, if that's a surprise." If you didn't tell me there was a three Nobody cylinder, knows. I would not have. I wouldn't have even thought to check. And I wouldn't have even maybe believed you. So with the new Mini, now that you have the, the regular one, the S, uh, they're more coming for uh, for that, that car, more other versions, uh, John Works or anything like that? So John Cooper, so we'll have at the time of launch, which is really right now, we're starting to deliver uh, a few cars right now. Um, so we have Cooper and Cooper S. Uh, John Cooper Works, we expect, we did show a concept back in Detroit. Yeah. We do expect to see... Maybe John Cooper works uh, possibly back next year. So um, not official confirmed, but um, if we bring it, it definitely won't be this year. It'll be yeah. in, into next well, year. Well, you have to do the work before. That's right. We got to <laughs> do the work on John Cooper works. That's right. Exactly. Well, thank you very much, Patrick. Uh, we're yeah. going to keep enjoying the show. Thanks, Javier. Thank you. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.